The first thing I want to take a look at in this series, just so as we can make sure that we all, you know, understand exactly what Lightwave does, how it does things differently, and most of all, of course, what we're going to be seeing in these tutorials, is to make reference to the different ways in which you can go about producing animation in Lightwave. Obviously, not everything animated is character animation. We have stuff like this, which is, of course, you know, a bullet physics simulation here, where the animation is basically done for us essentially automatically, if you will, by the physics engine. Um, it is, of course, you know, we haven't had to do anything other than set all of that up, but it is, you know, clearly a fully animated scene. We can have other setups like this, where we've got some, you know, ocean displacement shader, which is animated, and the animation comes from a nodal network, which we have created and set up here to drive, you know, the displacement change over time. And we have other tools here, like the flocking generator that lets us, you know, generate these flocking particle systems, as well as, of course, you know, other particle type systems, Lightwave's regular particle dynamics, as well as, of course, the like of cloth effects, hard effects, bone dynamics, and all of that stuff. Obviously, we'll often refer to these things, you know, individually by, you know, bullet animation or flocking or nodal setups and so on and so forth. However, generally, they all fall within a single class of animation, which is commonly referred to as procedural animation. In the case of procedural animation, what you are doing is you are using a system, a tool, or indeed, you know, sort of creating one if you're making a node network, filling it up with a bunch of input parameters, and then just letting it run for the animation to be generated for you. Although you can, of course, you know, go and keyframe certain parameters over time with different systems if you're wanting to, there's no real manual animation work involved. You don't really have to do any keyframing. All of this stuff is great and wonderful and very useful, and there's certainly a lot that we could talk about and explore with these different tools. However, these are not the point of this series of tutorials, and we won't be looking at any procedural animation work. The type we will be looking at then is, of course, keyframe hand animation, principally on characters, though not exclusively. We'll be covering an awful lot of general animation work that applies to all sorts of situations when you're keyframing just about anything. And in these sorts of setups, we have some sort of controls built into our character or vehicle or whatever else, which we operate, manually pose, and keyframe over time to create hand-produced keyframe animation, pretty much like this. This, of course, being what most people generally think of when we talk about doing animation. The last kind of animation that we will frequently encounter is this motion capture animation, where we have, you know, either a set of nulls or most commonly bones that have got animation pre-baked into them, having come from a motion capture source, and which we can then apply to our own characters or meshes for quick, easy, complex character animation. There are, of course, certain workflows and techniques for being able to, you know, get this process to work correctly so that your mocap does come in properly onto your character. But once again, that's not something that we will be covering in this series of tutorials. Rather, we will be focusing entirely upon manually produced hand keyframed animation. However, one of the things that is often important with motion capture is that people don't always want to use it just flat as it is. It's very common that you'll desire to make some changes to the mocap. Perhaps you'll want to exaggerate out certain moves or poses, or maybe you'll want to underplay them a little bit from what's come from the motion capture to better fit your character. Or maybe you just want to fiddle around to, you know, adjust certain timings or spacings within the motion capture animation. Speed it up, slow it down in places, time warp it, stuff like that. When it comes to doing such things on motion capture, when it comes to manually editing the motions that you've got, then the skills that are needed to do that are very much manual hand animation skills. Many people, of course, think that if you desire to use motion capture, you don't really need to know how to animate. And that's certainly true if you are just going to use the motion capture clips as they come out the box. However, if you wish to be able to change or tweak or edit motion capture animation, 
then you absolutely do really need to know and understand the practice of animation itself, be able to understand the body mechanics of characters, be able to apply the principles of animation to your edits and changes. As such, a great amount of the knowledge, the skills, the techniques and the exercises which we have present in these tutorials will be of great value to you in being able to do that sort of mocap editing work also.